Hello and God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in to part two of the biblical case for the pre-tribulation rapture. In this part, I will be going over the different administrations. And if you don't have any understanding of administrations, hopefully you will by the end of this broadcast. Now, I'd like to start by reading this paragraph in my notes here. To understand the rapture of the church, also known as the gathering together, we must rightly divide the word of God, 2 Timothy 2.15 instructs us, by taking into account the different time periods appointed by God for a particular purpose, which are called administrations. We must also understand the distinction between Israel and the Church of Christ in Bible prophecy so that we can have an accurate understanding of what applies to Israel and what applies to the Church. Lastly, we must take into account what God has provided as examples of what is to come in the future. So these are all topics that we will be covering, but today we're just going to cover the administrations. The different administrations. To understand when the rapture will occur, we must first understand the different administrations that are appointed by God and which administration we are currently in. So we know that we are now no longer under law thanks to Jesus Christ and his accomplishments for us. Romans chapter 3 verse 21 through 24 says, but now righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. You skip down... A few verses down to verse 28. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 says you are not under law but under grace. Romans chapter 7 verse 6 says but now by dying to what once bound us we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code colossians chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 say he forgave us all our sins having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and stood opposed to us he took it away nailing it to the cross and as we um, discussed for a, just a, a short couple of minutes in the first segment of this broadcast, we talked about um, in Ephesians how we are in the Grace Administration. And administration, just to remind you, is also known as dispensation and if you look that up in the dictionary it's a divine ordering of affairs in the world so this is how God sets up his ordering um, and for his, for a particular purpose and we also we talked about this in light of Daniel's prophecy so I just wanted to remind you that in Daniel's prophecy of the 70 weeks weeks of years appointed to Israel he did not directly state that there would be a gap between the 69th and 70th week because according to the scriptures the grace administration that was in the prophetic gap was a mystery to men until after it had already begun and then was revealed to the Apostle Paul and others um, but here in the scriptures we we have it through Paul's writing now let's read in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 2 through 6. You can go ahead and take your Bible and turn to Ephesians. Starting in verse 2. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace, remember, that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. This is Paul's writing. 
in reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the ministry of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. I see. So it wasn't only revealed to Paul, but we read about it in the Bible through the Apostle Paul's writings. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members of one body and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. And then in verses 8 and 9, this grace has given me, was given me to preach the Gentiles the unsearchable riches in Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of of his mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things and then if you even go to Colossians in chapter 1 verses 25 through 27 it says I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present you to you the word of God in its fullness which is the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, according to the Bible, throughout history, mankind has been under several different administrations and different periods of time in which God has managed the affairs of the world. As we have read in Ephesians and Colossians, we are currently under the administration of grace, which is salvation and promised inheritance through Christ's sacrifice and resurrection. Since the grace administration was previously a mystery hidden in God, it was revealed to the church when the time was at hand. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10 say and he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in christ to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment verses 13 and 14 and you were also included in christ when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation having believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised holy spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Amen to that. Now, let's go through these administrations. What was before the Grace Administration? What will come after the Grace Administration? That's what we're going to go over. So, I hope you're taking good notes. I hope you're pausing this video when you need to so that you can follow along in the Bible. Um, I want you to be able to digest everything. I know this is a, it's going to be a, a lengthy um, broadcast, but that's why I've broken it up into different parts so that you can go at your own pace. Grab a cup of coffee, relax, get into this and enjoy it. This is all to bless you, to bless you with the truth of God's word. So I will start and we will go through the different administrations. Now, the first administration when Adam and Eve were first created was the time of innocence, ending with the fall of man or the original sin and the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Then began another administration where they were no longer innocent. Now this was the period without law. Acts chapter 17 verse 30 calls this times of ignorance. The end was with the flood and the judgment on Babel. The third administration, the era under law, beginning with the law being revealed to Moses. People were no longer ignorant, Romans chapter 7, verse 7. And this ended with Israel rejecting and crucifying their Messiah. The fourth administration is what we're in now, the Grace Administration. This is the appointed time for the filling up of the church, as Romans 
chapter 11, verse 25 says, until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, this is our time. This is the day of salvation, as it says in another um, verse of the Bible. The end of this period will be the rapture, the catching away, the gathering together of the Church of Christ, which will allow the Antichrist to be revealed, as we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Once he's revealed, the day of the Lord will begin. The tribulation period will begin. The church is currently the restraining factor holding this back. So once we are removed, the grace administration will have ended, and then it will be an administration of uh, punishment, of judgment, um, how does Revelation word that? Um, the hour of trial will come upon the earth. Okay. So with the fifth administration being the day of the Lord, the tribulation period, um, this will end with Christ's physical return to earth. And there are several scriptures that say that Christ will return with his saints. So we will return with Christ. We have to leave earth first to return with Christ, right? So we'll, we'll go over, you know, we'll put all these puzzle pieces together to let them fit perfectly uh, show, to show you how everything's going to play out here. But this, the tribulation period is going to end with the return of Christ. What's going to happen after that? Well, it's going to be the sixth administration uh, it's going to be a thousand year reign. Jesus Christ is going to reign for a thousand years with his saints. We are joint heirs to the kingdom. We are going to reign with Christ. And this is something that we'll go over later on in this broadcast, but I um, just wanted to add another small um, nugget of information that even those people who were saved during the tribulation period, they are going to be resurrected after the tribulation period, and they're also going to rule and reign with Christ, with us as well. So we're all going to reign together. So um, that's a pretty cool thing to look forward to. Now, after the millennial reign of Christ will be the seventh administration and this will be the new heaven and the new earth, and it will be our eternal state of glory, living with God, no more sin, no more evil. Um, and it, Christ has to reign for a thousand years, and after which the Bible tells us that he will reign until all enemies have been put under his feet, with the last enemy being death. So um, there's going to be one more judgment at the end of this millennial reign, and the rest of the people who are not found in the written in the book of life, um, even Old Testament saints will be resurrected for this judgment. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment. And after this, all sin is finally put under Christ's feet. All enemies are finally put under Christ's feet. Uh, Satan has been released for one last chance to deceive mankind at the end of Christ's thousand year reign. You can read this right in Revelation chapter 20. Uh, and then after he is finally imprisoned for eternity, he's thrown into the lake of fire with the rest of the people who are just, you know, blatant God rejecting haters. Uh, all these people are going to be under, all of these enemies are going to be put under Christ's feet. Now, Christ hands the kingdom over to God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I forget what verse, but it's in chapter 15, where after all enemies have been put under Christ's feet, he hands the kingdom over to God. Then, God will present us the new heaven and the new earth. The heavenly Jerusalem will descend to the new earth from heaven. And so this is some pretty cool stuff. So we have seven administrations here. The first is the time of innocence. And the end of that was the fall of man and the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. The second administration was the period without law. As um, 
Acts 17.30 says this was the times of ignorance. This ended with the flood and the judgment on Babel. The third administration was the era under law, and it ended with Israel rejecting and crucifying their Messiah, Jesus Christ. They, they didn't believe that he was the true Messiah. And still to this day, uh, the majority of Israelites reject Christ as their Messiah. Um, so the fourth administration is the Grace Administration, which we're in now. The fifth administration is going to be um, the Tribulation Period. The sixth administration is going to be the Millennial Reign of Christ with His Saints. And the seventh administration is going to be the Eternal State of Glory with our new heaven and new earth. We have a little visitor here peeking his head in. In God's word, it is evident that the number seven is a significant number, always in relation to completion and perfection. So it makes sense that there are seven administrations in God's dealings with mankind, with the seventh administration being just that, complete and perfect. The new in heaven and the new earth it will be our eternal state of glory where all enemies have been put under Christ's feet. He has handed the kingdom back over to God. God has um, finally at this point in time um, given us the new heaven and the new earth where he will dwell with his people once again and they will see his face. Read Revelation chapter 21 and 22. It's all about this new heaven and new earth and it is so beautiful. Just, uh, just to know just a little bit of... Um, what we can expect in our eternal home. So, um, Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, um, is talking about this time um, when we receive the new heaven and new earth, and it says, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Well, we know eternity has no end, but at this point, God's work in mankind is complete. Isn't that wonderful that someday all sin, all hurt, pain, tears, anything bad will be just wiped away and we will have a perfect eternal home with God and with Jesus Christ and with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. So I thank you God for that. This is the end of part two. Uh, the next part, part three, will be a little bit more lengthy, so I hope you can set aside some time to just um, be able to get into that, that third Bible study with me and make sure that you um, please do pray before so that God can work in your spirit to open your eyes, open your ears, um, absorb the truth, understand it, as I'm sure you will. This is some beautiful stuff. We have a lot of beautiful promises in our future. So, see you next time.